It's the Dungeon Miser back again, time for part two of the Fungus mini-series. To get the most pop for our pennies, I'm jumping back into the Dungeon Miser DeLorean and rolling all the way back to 1982 for two classic fungi monsters, the Gaspore and the Ascomoid. These are classic trap type monsters that can cause a lot of pain. This is the part where normally I would show you prices for the commercial version of these miniatures, but I can't because there aren't any for sale. Another one of the downsides of buying miniatures, besides the high prices, turns out to be a complete lack of merchandise. Sometimes you just can't buy what you need because nobody thinks they can make any money selling you one. But that is okay because we can make our own. If you've never seen a gas spore before, the best way to describe it is a balloon of toxic gas that looks like a beholder, but it's really just a mindless fungus that explodes when it takes damage and then it spreads its nasty spores around in the process, which is just wonderful. To make this evil piñata, you need to get a plastic ball about an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. I'm using this practice golf ball. I get those eight for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, but a ping pong ball or styrofoam ball would work also. To prep the ball, the first thing I did was drill a few tiny holes around the bottom center part. These will be for the tendrils that hang from the bottom of the fungus and they'll also hold the flight stand that'll keep it on its base. After that I drilled a place up front for the pseudo eyeball and I widened it with a pair of clippers. You can use any size bead you want for the main eye. I chose a larger 20 millimeter bead but you can use whatever you have big or small. I made the hole bigger than the bead I'm using for the eyeball because I needed to stuff this hollow ball with paper so that the tendrils and the bead would stick to it with the glue. Don't worry about any gaps you might have because all of that will be covered up in the next step. Just make sure that if you use a hollow ball to stuff it tightly and glue your bead into place. Once your eyeball bead is glued in, you need to get a few pieces of tissue. This is an old DM Scotty trick. You can use facial tissue, toilet paper, gift box tissue, whatever you have. Wrap some around the ball a few times and then get it damp to help it stick down. Don't worry if it covers your bead though. It'll scrape off easily to fill the gaps and form a kind of socket. And when you're happy with the coverage, you just coat the paper with a watered down mix of PVA glue and let that dry. For the tendrils, I snipped a short piece of paper clip for each hole that I drilled in the bottom and bent one in slightly. The hooked end sticks nicely between the ball and the paper that was packed inside. And for the middle hole, I glued a really long wire and then bent the bottom into a stand. Then that stand gets glued to a 40 millimeter base to hold the gas spore up like it's floating along. When everything is dry, we need to make the skin of the spore, and for that we need split peas. Split peas are a classic terrain material, often used as cobblestones or chunky rivets on architecture. Today we're going to be using them as lumpy skin. Just spread a little PVA over the dried paper and stick the peas on flat side down. Pack them really tight so that there aren't any gaps. Just keep sticking them on. Keep going. Okay, done. When the body is completely covered and the glue is dry, you can add the eye stalks. I'm using three different sizes of beads for the eye stalk because I like the variety, but if you only have one size of bead, that will work just as well. A drop of PVA for each bead you want to add is all you need. If you only want a few eye stalks, or if you want a lot, it's totally up to you. Beholders come in a really wide variety, so we have artistic license here. And that's it. Prime and paint. And here's the finished gas spore ready to pop. If we're going to price it out, the ball was 13 pennies. The base was 1 penny and 2 pennies for the art supplies. So 16 pennies or about 6 gas spores for a dollar. The next old school fungus is called an ascomoid. The best way to describe this monster is to imagine that big boulder trying to crush Indiana Jones. Except this one is alive and can change directions. It's a great monster for subterranean ambushes or to make a cavern full of molds even more deadly. This one is supposed to be big enough to crush a human, 
So I'm using a cheap plastic baseball as the base. The ascomoid moves by spewing gas out of nodules protruding from its leathery skin. For the nodules, I'm using regular old pony beads and gluing those all over the baseball. I cluster a few in groups of two and three for variety. Once the glue on the beads is dry, you can use the exact same tissue technique that we use for our gas bore to cover the ball and the beads. After you have a nice thick covering, you can coat the paper in watered down glue like before. So if you covered up your beads, you'll see that the holes have been clogged up with the paper, and that's okay. Once the glue is dry, we can go back through and clean out all the paper that's in the beads. If after it's dry you find there's a few patches you don't like or that need more texture, you can always go back with some more paper in those spots and dampen it down and add a little bit more glue. When you have everything you like and the glue is dry, it's ready for paint. And here's the finished model, about to crush that stupid dark elf. I chose to base mine on an 80 millimeter base, a little bit off center to give it the feeling of movement, but you can skip the base and just put it down as is on the table if you like. For the pricing, the ball was 33 pennies, so you get those three for a dollar, and a penny for the base, and a penny for the art supplies. So 35 pennies, or about three for a dollar or so. And here's our fungus together. You might be thinking that you could use these techniques to make a beholder instead of a fake beholder. Well, you sure can. In fact, I encourage it because you can make about 30 beholders for the price of one commercial model if you use this technique. And this way, your players will never be sure what they're facing if you always use this model. I hope you enjoyed that blast from the past and are already thinking up ways to add these nasty creatures to your campaign. Join me next week and I'll be finishing up the Fungus mini-series with two more cheap and deadly plant monsters. Thanks again for watching.